What's going on guys? I'm finally back. Sorry for uh, that it's been such a long time since I have uploaded anything. I've been trying to do regular uploads, but I've been waiting on some parts to get here. Um, but I finally got some stuff that I can put on the car to show you guys. So I just got the S2000's angle kit in from uh, Chris Jenner. It's the beagle kit uh, for the S2000. So it comes with these outer tie rods, uh, custom, and then these brackets that bolt on to the knuckle and the ball joint also bolts to these. So these should add about 60 degrees of angle on this thing, which they, these don't come with very much angle from the factory. So this is gonna be a huge upgrade to start with right out of the box. Um, I'm super excited to see how the car drives with these and also how this car drives in comparison to my E46. I'm sure it's gonna be a whole different animal um, driving this car compared to the E46 because the E46 is just a really good car for drifting. It transitions really easy. It's a longer wheelbase car and everybody says these cars suck for drifting. So I can't wait to prove all you guys wrong. All right, so we're gonna start putting the uh, angle block on first. So with these, it's really easy. Um, as you can kind of see back here, the lower ball joint bolts to the actual uh, knuckle itself these two bolts which are 17 millimeters there's one right here one over here as well uh, we're gonna get those out first So we're gonna start by getting these two bolts into the plate here. So I just finished putting the plate on. It bolts to the original spot, the lower ball joint right there previously mounted to, you just use the factory bolts through the bottom of the plate. You want the curvature of the plate. Uh, I'm not sure how well you guys can see that, but you want it pointing that way. You want the back side of the curve against the knuckle side. So the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, put the lower ball joint into the plate. There's only two holes that can go if you have the plate facing the correct way. Uh, you're gonna use the hardware that's supplied by Chris, which is a nylock nut, and it looks like a M8 or M10 uh, machine bolt. So you're gonna put the bolt through the top side. Um, it does not come with washers, but I have a couple extra washers that I wanna throw on here just to have a little bit more surface on here. Um, I just like the idea of having that. So we're gonna throw those on right now. So the nuts on the bottom of the bolts that he supplies you with is a 19 millimeter. Uh, just gonna have to use a Allen head on the top to hold it for tightening it. I'll tighten it up on that side. That side's also all tightened up. So now this bracket is actually pretty much fully installed. Now we just gotta put the new inner and outer tie rod on. Um, we're gonna be using this middle hole here, which is gonna be the higher angle option. This one's less angle. Uh, so we want the most angle we can possibly get out of this car. Uh, so we're gonna use this hole with the tie rod pickup. All right, so now we're gonna get the inner tie rod off and outer tie rod. So there's a little um cutter pin usually that goes through the nut right here or the tie rod and i already pulled that out it's a 19 millimeter nut on the tie rod end to loosen it which we're gonna hit right now and a lot of times these things are stuck in here after you loosen it so you're gonna want to leave the nut on a little bit and you're gonna want to hit on the knuckle right here with the hammer or uh something heavy to break the tie rod free from the edge i got my bfh and it's free. So next thing we're gonna need to do is pull this 
inner tie rod boot off. There's a clip right here. It's just a little, use some pliers on it, slides right off. So I already have removed the factory one, but usually it's a little uh, factory clip and you gotta bend the tab up and you can slide it out. I just have a zip tie on here because I'm assuming I didn't replace it with the factory clip last time. Uh, don't mind all the oil on here. Have a soil oil leak. It looks like maybe my catch can isn't sealed all the way on the bottom. So now we're gonna get this inner tie rod boot off. So to get this inner tie rod boot off, uh, you're gonna need to get this outer tie rod off is the easiest way to just slide it right off the end here. Uh, so you're gonna need to put a, I use two crescent wrenches, um, one on here where there's a spot to grab and then on this jam nut here. And then you're just gonna break it free, which I already did off camera. And then your outer tie rod should just slide right off, unthread it, unthread your nut, And then this boot will, with some encouragement, it's a little dry in here. You can always spray something to lube this. It'll make it a lot easier to slide off. Just keep twisting. And voila. So now you'll reuse this with the other new inner tie rod that we're gonna put on. Uh, next thing you're gonna need to use is a big crescent wrench on the inner tie rod right here. I got this crescent wrench here. You're just gonna put it right on the portion that has a slot for a wrench. I'm not sure what size the actual wrench you can use to uh, loosen this. I just always use crescent wrenches on my tie rods generally, and I have no issue with it. So I just got the inner tie rod broke free. Use this on here, spin it down, left it loosey. So inner tie rod is free. This one's still in good shape. I may keep it as a spare. It might possibly be useful. If for some reason I'm in a pinch and need one at the track. It's always good to have spares for everything. And inner tie rod is out. So we're gonna grab our new inner tie rod that Chris Generate supplies with his kit, which is right here. Looks to be significantly shorter. We're gonna go ahead and thread this right into the rack. Basically, it's gonna be the same process uh, as taking it off, just reverse. So we're gonna tighten the inner tie rod onto the rack with the uh, crescent wrench. Got it as far as I can go by hand. Get it onto the rack tight as I can. Should be good there. Now, we're gonna grab the new outer tie rod end that we're gonna be putting on. Outer tie rod sleeve, threads right on. I'm unsure on really where we're gonna need to have this at, so I'm just kinda gonna throw it on here and then have uh, my buddy Darius, who does really good uh, mobile alignments, come over here and do a race car alignment on this for me. Then we gotta thread the heim joint into the end here. Like I said, I don't have really any idea where I'm gonna put this at, so I'm just gonna kinda throw roughly a guess on here. Thread this in. Maybe we'll call there good. Slide the knuckle over. Line it up with the hole we're gonna be using. Throw the nut on the bottom side here with the supply bolt that he gives you. And nut. And we're gonna tighten this up. It looks to be the same. Uh, 10 millimeter Allen for the top, 19 for the bottom. So we'll get that tightened up right I'll now. I'll tighten other than the jam nut right here, but I'm gonna leave that loose for when uh, Darius comes and does the alignment for me, so it's easier for him to just adjust everything. And now, uh, also, don't forget to put your inner tie rod boot back on like I did. So now I have to take this back off real quick to throw the inner tie rod boot back on the inner. And make sure to re-zip tie uh, the boot on the rack. All installed. Now let's see how much angle this so has. This is full lock to the right significant amount of angle compared to stock, which we can go take a look at this side. Full lock to the right. Look how much more angle this car is gonna have. And then now I'll show you full lock to the left. Look at that. Obviously the angle will change when the car is on the ground. Everything will be a lot different. 
Um, we'll check this side out as well. Much less lock. Not nearly as much angle as this angle kit provides. So this is really exciting to see. Uh, also adding this angle kit actually increases a lot of camber. So either you're gonna want to run the SPC ball joints that have adjustable camber, or I am getting a set of P2M upper control arms uh, that are adjustable fully with spherical joints and everything because these bushings have never been replaced in these. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw those in here. It should clean up some of uh, the bushing slop on the top here, upper control arm, as well as give me a new ball joint and give me full adjustable camber. So let me know what you guys think of the video so far. I know they're probably not the most entertaining and like usual me being crazy, uh, but I'm trying to be somewhat informal for people um, that are interested in drifting in this chassis. Like I said, there's not much information really drifting this chassis and everybody always says they're not a good drifting chassis. And that's generally all people that have never tried it and just heard somebody say, yeah, that's not a good chassis for drifting. Uh, there's been many chassis like that, like the Miata. People used to say Corvettes weren't good for drifting. And now look at, there's lots of Miatas drifting and lots of Corvettes drifting. So things change. It's been a long time since somebody's tried to drift one of these, I feel like at a higher level. Uh, I know there's a guy down in Texas who does a good job with a supercharged J-Series. I think his Instagram is Drift s 2 k He's got a really cool car if you guys want to go check that out. Um, but I will see you in the next video. I will be probably installing those upper control arms and doing a little bit of a how-to for anybody that wants to know how to install upper control arms on an S2000. So I'll see you guys soon. Don't forget to like the video, share it, subscribe, whatever you want. Leave me some constructive criticism for comments. Anything helps.